Good morning. Thank you to everyone for joining us. We'll go ahead and get started. Before we start with the first of Rescale ScaleX Enterprise webinar series, just a couple of uh, small housekeeping items. We'll be taking questions and during the Q&A at the very end of the presentation, but please feel free to ask any during the, the presentation in the questions section of the GoToWebinar. And we'll also be recording the entire presentation and emailing it out at the end of today. So with that, I'll go ahead and turn it over to Rescale's Vice President of Sales, Tony Spagnolo. Thanks, Elia. <clears throat> Welcome, everybody. I appreciate you taking the time out in the day to hear about uh, our enterprise roadmap to elastic computing. As Elia said, my name is Tony Spagnolo, and I'm the Vice President of Sales. Sorry, a little technical difficulty. Okay, there we go. All right, so uh, as I said, this is the, the first, this is the first of the enterprise roadmap, uh, talking about enterprise roadmap to elastic computing. What I'll do is I'll go over uh, our viewpoint on uh, the benefits of elastic computing, a roadmap to get to it, and some of the key parameters around it. Our second series will be uh, Ryan, our chief architect, talking about integrating on-premise HPC with uh, cloud HPC. In this particular case, you'll be talking about how you make uh, your internal resources available directly on Rescale, or you provide uh, an opportunity to, to push jobs from Rescale to your on, from your on-premise computing. In our, in our third, uh, Adam McKenzie, our CTO, will be talking about how you build uh, using our administrative portal uh, full IT control and security around your particular environment. So if you kind of look at the simulation trends, the, the animation showing up on the right is uh, part of a project that we're involved in called the Living Heart Project sponsored by Dassault Systems. And if you look at that project, it kind of encapsulates some of the key things that we're seeing in simulation. Uh, First, uh, there's obviously an increase dependent on simulation. If you look at what this particular project is trying to attempt uh, in, in terms of its objectives around uh, creating devices and drugs and other sort of parameters for the, uh, treating a, an ailing heart, this is very difficult to do any other way but simulation. So the project is dependent on simulation. Obviously, this is a very complex simulation, involves FEA, CFD, uh, tissue modeling, a lot of very intricate uh, um, elements and uh, very complex. It's geographically distributed. There's a number of different partners involved in this. They're distributed around the world, They're both uh, um, government, academia, uh, commercial, and then provider, and then Rescale providing the backbone to be able to execute computing. Um, being able to predict what sort of demand uh, for projects like this and, and HPC computing is very difficult. It'll, it'll certainly vary with time. And then ultimately, you know, organizations are finding it difficult to hire HPC staff. Obviously, there's a high demand for that staff. It's very difficult to hire them. And so these are some of the challenges of the simulation trends that we see that are driving people to the cloud. And obviously there's constraints on responsiveness. So if you look at traditionally, uh, as people have engaged in the cloud, there's, also, there's all, uh, many times an interest in comparing on-premise costs to um, to cloud costs. So if you look at sort of a typical cost analysis, operating costs are lower on, on the cloud versus on-premise, and obviously you don't have the capital acquisition. I think this is a worthwhile exercise. It certainly is something that needs to be done at some point in the process, but a lot of it is geared around assuming that you're going to be driving towards a fixed capacity. Our, our viewpoint on this, this should be done later in the process and people should focus more on the primary benefits of cloud computing around the elasticity of 
cloud computing, the simplification, being able to drive innovation through simulation, the ease of use of deployment and control, and ultimately the ability to foster collaboration. Obviously with the cloud, now if you have geographically distributed teams, it's much easier to share models, uh, use common practices, and have a common interface to be able to execute the type of simulations that you want. And so really the question comes down to not about comparing fixed capacity, but really how variable your, capacity, uh, your demand is. If you sort of uh, look at a couple of different cases, the question comes down to, is capacity uh, increased like case A? I think for uh, traditional expansion of HPC at organizations, this is what it looks like. This is what uh, the expansion looks like. Or is uh, unconstrained demand really highly variable um, and, and driven by a number of different factors that have to do with design processes, the intersection of projects, being able to resol uh, resolve issues and so on. Assuming uh, demand is really like case B, the question is what is the value then to elastic computing to engineering? Is it uh, of high value to be able to, to, be able to uh, have short bursts of being able to run many simulations, either design of experiments, many parallel simulations, uh, optimization, design exploration uh, for the engineering process. That's really the fundamental question. And many times that we engage with clients on is around going to the business with IT to ask them that very question to look at what is the value of elastic computing. If you bring up uh, one particular case study, an industrial enterprise, we were engaged with for over a year now. This is a diversified manufacturer. They were like many uh, manufacturers that came out of the recession. They had an aging HPC. Simulation was uh, very critical to their design process. And with the ramp up after the recession, they were seeing uh, increasing frequencies of uh, short periods of time where they needed a lot of capacity. So what was happening was, uh, Simulation answers were late. They really didn't have the CapEx at that point in time to look at increasing their need or even satisfying those peak needs. And it was creating bottlenecks in the organization. So ultimately what we deployed was ScaleX Enterprise, um, started mainly with their on-demand software and looked at a no queue structure, unconstrained. The results were pretty inevitable. They were able to uh, deliver simulation results on time, compressing the design cycle and morale improved and, and uh, bottom line results improved. If you look at uh, really what happened over that, over that year, to take a short snippet of what their demand actually looked like, it was highly variable. This is a snapshot of a couple of months done in, in day periods. And if you take a look at the exact numbers, what you find out is peak to steady state usage varied by 20 times. Um, in order to meet uh, design cycles, these bursts many times only lasted a few days. Utilization rate, if you were to take a look at this and say, okay, if I were to try to meet the 24-7 capacity at the peak, your utilization rate would only be around 20% for that fixed capacity. And obviously, if you, you have a on-premise or a cloud or a fixed cloud HPC, so in order to accommodate that capacity, then you know, your actual cost would be dramatically higher due to that low utilization rate. It would be impossible to su support that type of steady state capacity. Um, overall, the unconstrained uh, uh, environment, improved working conditions and the morale overall for the staff. And as I said, this would be impossible to deploy in an on-premise fashion. Uh, and we learned a lot through this course, uh, you know, what works and what doesn't and, and how you construct this in a way to be effective for the organization. And now we're taking uh, the next steps at this particular organization. But despite these benefits, it's worthwhile to talk about there are always concerns with cloud computing. And these, these are the ones that commonly come up. Security. Data transfer, in other words, am I going to hog on my bandwidth on my network? Is it going to take too long to download 
the, the files? Do I really have control, both from a budgetary standpoint, a user standpoint, a code standpoint? And, and uh, what do I do about my existing hardware investment? The solutions are straightforward. People just need to decide that they want to execute around those. Around security, people really need to conduct an audit. We've gone through many of them. They're comprehensive, they're tedious, they're a little bit different each time, but I think it's a healthy process to go through uh, for each organization. Um, for data transfer, uh, there's many solutions around being able to use either remote desktops to review results, use en enhanced file transfers to increase uh, the rate at which files transfer down, or to look at automation around reducing the results directly on the cloud. So now as you're all you're um, transmitting is a subset versus the large superset. I, uh, control, uh, having a comprehensive administrative portal that allows you to control all the aspects of user code and budgetary um, parameters. And then with the existing hardware, which I'll elaborate a little bit later in the presentation, and we'll talk about more in the, in the next um, couple of webinars is around using a hybrid cloud. In other words, making your on-premise and your, your off-premise or your cloud resources working in concert in a common interface. So to kind of briefly go over uh, the phases, obviously the first phase is uh, no cloud. So either you're constraining the capacity or you're trying to build up an internal HPC capacity to meet peak needs. Uh, in the first phase, like in the case study I, I uh, pointed out, it's about trying to trap that overflow. And in that case, you know, the on-demand cost or the instant cost of the, HP or the cloud computing really needs to be compared at the value to the product development cycle of getting out answers in a timely fashion. The next phase is around creating a uh, hybrid cloud with your on-premise resources. And a lot of the uh, ROI is around instantaneous purchasing additional uh, capacity or um, versus, you know, uh, wasting an engineer's time. You know, it's not uncommon to install additional capacity. It can take months, many months between the procurement cycle installation and, and so on. And so with the cloud, you can bring that on pretty rapidly. And then the last phase is around completely repla replacing the internal HPC. It's at that point where you really need to do a comprehensive ROI between your on-premise and the cloud. And that's the, that's the time to do it. Uh, phase three, frankly, is optional. You don't necessarily have to uh, execute on phase three. Phase two puts you in a position to do that. And it's really up to you. It really comes down to uh, an ROI decision on whether you want to um, fully execute on, on that particular strategy. So again, you know, in phase one uh, for the overflow HPC, what we're trying to do, what we are doing is complementing existing internal resources, but they're operating separately, meeting immediate departmental needs and eliminating the need for capital expenditure associated with uh, buying additional internal capacity. Phase two is around integrating the on-premise resources, leveraging your existing assets, making a comprehensive enterprise solution and strategy. And then phase three, if you so decide to execute, it's a, around creating an agile environment, completely replacing the internal HPC with cloud. And as I said, these are uh, optional strategies. You don't necessarily have to go down this path, but phase two sets you up in a nice position to be able to execute on that. So let's go into a little bit more uh, detail what we, we typically do in each of these phases. So phase one, this is the time to do the security assessment. It's the right time, it gives you uh, uh, the confidence that you have a security enablement. In our case, um, we have many different security layers at the cornerstone, we encrypt everything. We don't even have access to your files and you're the only one that can delete them or change them or move them or share them. Um, you know, we, we bring in your typical simulation workflows that you're going to implement for the various codes. 
We uh, connect to your relevant license servers. So for instance, if you're going to use LS Dyna as an example, we'll either, you'll either do that on demand or we'll connect to your internal license server through a VPN or a, um, or a uh, secure tunnel. Enable post-processing, internal review, training. Training is, is very straightforward. It typically takes us about an hour. And then deploy to the teams that can immediately see the benefit. I think this is critical. You need to be deploying this to the individual teams, departments, groups, divisions that can see the immediate benefit and have the greatest bottlenecks. So ultimately what this looks like is your engineering teams can now access uh, individually either your internal HPC resources or the cloud, and IT overall has uh, oversight. So for the engineer, what this looks like is an easy to use workflow where they can download their files, describe their workflow, and then ultimately select the hardware that they need. This hardware can be selected on a simulation by simulation basis. They can change it. They need additional memory. They can go to a different hardware platform. They can change the number of cores and, and use other strategies to get optimal results. In phase two, this is around creating the enterprise framework. So connecting to all your license servers, uh, linking your on-premise uh, hardware and or schedulers as appropriate. Uh, defining the purchasing rules, so there's a number of different uh, enablement that you can do in the administration portal to limit budgets and so on, define groups, define projects, and put budgets around each of those layers. Ultimately, train the IT staff to, uh, on the management side. This is not a large training exercise, again, measured in hours. And then uh, an implementation process if you need our API to do additional customization. We, we provide a comprehensive API. You can do a wide variety of customization and um, we provide that uh, with, with documentation so that people can execute on whatever project or we can do those projects for people. So ultimately what this looks like for the engineering team, now through a single interface, they can access both on-premise and cloud resources and IT or management is at the center of it to be able to administrate the environment. So looks the same, same workflow to be able to execute on simulations. The key difference is in the hardware section now, we will add additional um, hardware choices. In this case, these will be your HPCs uh, whether that's one or many, all can be implemented uh, directly into the interface. Conversely, you can set up your internal HPCs to execute jobs to rescale through your scheduler. Both are possible, and again, you could execute that through a common interface. And then additionally, the IT controls are then, then implemented. This allows you to track budget usage on a daily basis, be able to uh, download this, uh, so if you need to do any additional analysis, being able to segment um, your jobs into various projects, so if you have to do any internal or externally charging, you can get uh, financials based on a project basis. And then be able to do organizational controls, such as limiting what software is available, what versions are actually used, and, and a wide variety of other parameters. The third phase is really around developing that strategic investment plan as to whether to continue to invest in a, in a certain level of on-premise capacity or to, to switch that to the cloud. If you so desire, then a decommissioning plan for your on-premise resources, uh, being able to do additional integration like single sign-on, uh, and then a long-term resource planning and purchasing to, to get your optimal ROI. There are options uh, within Rescale to not only to do things in an instant, which means no queue, or on demand, which means you have a queue, but also being able to do things like low priority execution and also prepaid. So uh, each of those has a different cost point 
and, and, and a different level of commitment or, or requirements. But you can pull those various levers ultimately to get an optimal ROI uh, to help um, to help you reduce your costs over time. So in this case, it looks pretty much the same, exactly the same as phase two. It's really a matter of how deeply now you've implemented it and whether you go to extents such as doing single sign-on. I think single sign-on is a very important parameter. People get tired of multiple passwords for different web logins and being able to use the single uh, password schema that you use for other applications internally, I think will be uh, effective for the users and they'll get a better user experience. So that, that's really um, around the phases. So, you know, to do a little bit of a, a commercial on Rescale, at the end of the day, what we want to do is help you build better products faster. In that case, what, we, what we've enabled is a multi-cloud environment that allows you to access as many as 100,000 cores at a time and be able to uh, seamlessly execute with various software packages. We have over 120 software titles loaded. We have over 30 data centers, and uh, we have a nice uh, next generation interface to be able to execute a solution and to provide you the innovation that you need to execute on your future products. It comes in uh, three flavors, uh, ScaleX Pro. So when a user goes to rescale.com and creates a login, that's what they're by default uh, enabled. This has all the engineering capability around being able to execute jobs, attach license servers, remote desktops. The key component that it, it doesn't have is the IT administrative control. And that's where uh, ScaleX Enterprise comes in, being able to get access to the API, get access to the administrative portal, and being able to do other levels of integration. ScaleX Developer uh, has some additional tools associated with it, and it really is geared towards either a software organization that wants to use Rescale as a development platform, for instance, doing regression testing on their software, or an internal software group that wants to do that, or uh, an internal integration or external integration group that's doing work for an end client on using our API to create a level of customization on Rescale to accommodate certain key processes that they have. Security. Security is uh, paramount here at Rescale. We take it very seriously. Um, we go through an annual audit to ensure that we have an environment that, that is secure, safe, and, and repeatable, and we have policies around that. Um, Additionally, we have a separate, distinct, and separated site to accommodate ITAR workflows. And as I stated, you know, we encrypt uh, all your files. They can be encrypted at your site. They're transmitted through secure channels. They stay encrypted at rest. The only time that they're decrypted is during a model execution. And additional layers of security are provided around the clusters once they're spun up. We're headquartered in, uh, in San Francisco, uh, data centers around the world. We have a strong customer base, automotive, aerospace, pharmaceutical, oil and gas, and academic institutions. And we're a startup, and we have a, gr a strong group of investors, including Jeff Bezos. And um, you know, we believe we have the solution to be able to uh, execute on an enterprise level solution that can provide you elastic computing. Um, as I said, data centers around the world and to be a little bit more transparent around that, we're a multi-cloud environment. We have, uh, we use AWS, Azure and others. We bring on the best platforms to be able for people to execute on their particular domains. Each of these has a particular advantage to them and there are certain points in time when you want to use them and with Rescale um, it's as simple as changing the hardware platform to go from one cloud provider to the other so it makes it a very nice way to be able to get a uh, geographic um, uh, footprint you know we get questions overseas where people 
want to uh, have things in their home country. So for instance, we have a, a Japanese native site that's hosted in Japan and all the data remains in Japan. We have the same thing in Germany as well. So uh, a summary, I don't need to tell you this, but simulation is pervasive. Uh, elasticity is really the key and understanding how that impacts your organization or can help benefit your organization. We do believe an on-premise ROI should be executed, but really around later phases. The cloud uh, is a phased approach. It's very straightforward. You don't have to uh, proceed to the additional phases if you want to stop at a particular phase. There's a lot of benefit around that, but each phase uh, sets you up for the next and then you can make the decisions on what, on what, uh, where you want to go from there. And Rescale is a secure multi-cloud environment to provide you uh, maximum elasticity around the world. So uh, I appreciate your time. We uh, will we'll take your questions uh, in a moment. Uh, I'll, I'll remind you this again, but there's two other uh, webinars coming up. Uh, one around uh, on-premise HPC with cloud HPC, bringing them together into a unified environment, and then uh, uh, deploying controls around our administrative portal. So at this point in time, uh, I'll take your questions and um, feel free to uh, pose any questions. Great, thank you so much, Tony. Uh, we've had some questions trickling in throughout the presentation, so we'll go ahead and and kick those off. But again, if anyone else has questions they'd like to ask, please submit them to the, the questions part of GoToWebinar. So the first question is, uh, if on-premise HPC workload is 90% 24 seven, um, will it be efficient uh, to migrate to the cloud? Well, what that says is a couple of things. Number one is you have an HPC lo large enough uh, to, uh, to execute every job that comes in, uh, there's no queue, uh, and pro maybe there's no need for elastic computing. I mean, there are instances, environments, where that's the case. Uh, the question is whether it's truly 90% every day, every hour, or there's a high variability to that. In that particular case, if it's not 90% steady state, it's, you know, you've actually over-invested in an on-premise HPC, and you have to sort of look at when you're going to actually absorb uh, that capacity. So, you know, the cloud's not for everybody uh, that has an on-premise HPC. If you do and it's not for you, the time to look at it again is when you go to the next level of investment. But I think it, and uh, for organizations who have that elastic need, highly variable um, simulation runs, projects that come up, uh, projects that come up on top of each other, I'm pretty sure that you'll find elastic computing is a benefit to you. Um, you know, the, the next question is, how is Rescale different from other cloud providers? I mean, there's a lot of different ways to answer that. But at the, at the core of it, we're a platform as a service. We, we provide a simulation-specific platform with the various elements that you need, uh, having the code ready, installed, and tested, having a simple workflow where you can execute on jobs, having a secure environment, having uh, administrative controls around budgets and code access and, and uh, user access, and, and having uh, remote desktops to be able to look at results visually directly on, on, uh, on the cloud without having to transport uh, files. So um, somebody could go to a, uh, you know, a cloud vendor like AWS, do some of these things, but ultimately what you'd be trying to replicate is the platform that we've created. We encapsulate that platform. We don't charge for it separately. It's, it, it comes, uh, um, you know, as you, um, as you uh, buy uh, compute time on Rescale. And for uh, Rescale Pro, there's no, there's no commitment on the amount that you have to spend in a particular year. Um, so, uh, I got a question, um, you refer, you referred to instant. What is instant? Um, that's our way of saying, uh, instant execution, uh, no, um, uh, no queue, 
the only time you're going to wait is uh, for cluster uh, spin up. A lot of systems have um, they call them on demand. We also have on demand. On demand um, many times, most times has a queue, and so you're going to be waiting in line uh, with other folks until your job uh, can execute. Um, so uh, last question, can you briefly um, talk about Rescale's ability to cloud burst? So um, there's many different contexts to that. Uh, you know, one particular customer we worked with, uh, the way they wanted a cloud burst was to do it directly from their uh, on-premise HPC and use their scheduler to do that. So they put a, a few smarts in their scheduler uh, to burst in the cloud. Um, we used our API in a, uh, in a very straightforward manner to be able to do that. That's one way uh, to do that. The other is what I described where you uh, allow the user or you put uh, parameters around that and you put um, your on-premise resources directly on the rescale environment and now you have a, a consolidated uh, environment to execute on. So with that, um, that's our last question. I certainly appreciate your time and, and attention today. Uh, if you have any more questions around Rescale, certainly feel free to reach out to us. My email address is tony at rescale.com. Pretty easy to remember. As I said, we have two more webinars. Uh, part two will be on August 5th, same time with Ryan talking about uh, integrating on-premise HPC with cloud HPC which gets to the last question that was asked. And then uh, Adam will talk about uh, um, using our administrative portal and other, uh, other facilities to, to be able to get full control over what your users do in the cloud. And that will be at eight o'clock on uh, Wednesday, August the 12th. Again, I appreciate your time and uh, look forward to coming back to the other two webinars. Thank you.